from the mountaintops. <sighs> anyway, be warned, there will be spoilers ahead, so if you haven't seen the show yet, uh, you might want to stop the video here and check it out. Like I said, it's excellent, I highly recommend it, especially if you're a fan of the franchise or the genre, the, sh the swashbuckling uh, action-adventure genre in general. You were warned. So, um, one of the reasons why people kept telling me that they didn't check it out when it premiered this past Friday, uh, January 19th, was because they saw it come up as a new show that was available to watch, and it had a star rating of 1 out of 5 on Prime Video. Fun fact about their star rating, it's 100% based on how many people have reviewed it, reviewed the show, and how many viewers have given it a thumbs up. So even if all the reviews are positive, and everybody who has seen it has given it a thumbs up, if not a lot of people have done that, then um, collectively the star rating is low. With that said, right now, as I am recording this uh, on the Tuesday after it premiered, it already has four out of five stars as its rating. So there you go. Um, furthermore, <clears throat> it's number one in Brazil. It's number nine in the United States. And uh, right now as I am recording this, it has an audience score on Rotten Tomatoes of 86% positive. So, no, no critics, no, no critic score yet. It, I, either not enough critics have reviewed it on Rotten Tomatoes, or, or no critics have reviewed it on Rotten Tomatoes yet. <clears throat> but I'm reviewing it right now, and I'm telling you, this is a quality show. Uh, the writing, the shot design, the cinematography, the production design, the costume design, uh, the makeup effects. The VFX, uh, the practical effects, the stunts, uh, the fight choreography, everything is top notch. This is um, a Zorro show that is produced with the utmost quality and artistry. All right? People keep asking me <clears throat> how does it compare to previous Zorro adaptations? And to tell you the honest to God truth, this, it's, it's like comparing apples to oranges. All the previous adaptations were designed for their medium. The original Douglas Fairbanks movies were designed to be silent movies, so they work really, really well as silent movies. The, uh, the live-action Disney show that I believe uh, was on in the 50s and 60s starring Guy Williams was designed to be a family show, so it works really well as a family show. The 90s Zorro starring Duncan Regeer from the Family Channel, that one was designed to be more of an action-adventure serial, like classic action-adventure serial, very much in the style of Star Wars and Indiana Jones, that kind of style of action, and it works well in that show. Uh, no, excuse me, that movie. And of course, the Antonio Banderas movies, they're big, giant, blockbuster movies that are meant to see on the big screen. So they work well on that medium. This is a streaming series through and through. It's a serialized, ongoing story told across 10 parts. However, <clears throat> unlike a lot of modern streaming uh, shows that is just for one story and technically speaking is just a movie but stretched out unnecessarily across multiple episodes where they could easily tell that story in just a three uh, act format secret invasion um, the producers of this show this new Zorro show very much applied the classic telenovela style of subplots and story arcs in this show as multiple stories are happening at the same time as the show is progressing so there's never a dull moment there's always multiple things happening at the same time and you're intercutting between different character stories and sometimes they meet and become one story and sometimes they don't 
uh, and they might cross in a future season. So very cool, very well designed and plotted out as far as the, the, the multi-phase storytelling uh, technique that they used, this, at least in this first season. I hope they, they keep that in future seasons. In my opinion, the one existing show that I feel most comfortable comparing it to would be the BBC's The Musketeers. It's that. It's that classic swashbuckling tale, but told with a more modern perspective and with modern techniques and modern styles. Um, but as an ongoing serial. And in fact, it feels like this show and The Musketeers belong in the same universe. So if you love that show, if you love The Musketeers, which is great, by the way, you'll definitely love this show. Before I get uh, on the subject of the premise of this show, it occurs to me while talking to people on social media that most people don't actually know what Zorro is about. They have a broad understanding of the premise of Zorro, but they don't really know. Like, like for example, uh, a lot of people, for some reason, think that Zorro takes place in Mexico, it doesn't. <clears throat> Zorro, uh, created by Justin McCulley in 1919, takes place in between, I want to say, the 1830 and 1840. This show specifically takes place in 1833. And it takes place in California, Los Angeles, California. Uh, which at the time was predominantly populated by Native Americans, uh, Spanish lords that bought the majority of the land, uh, and Spanish and Mexican peasants who were looking to start a new life in, on this new world. <clears throat> one of the rich families, one of the aristocratic families that own a very uh, considerable chunk of the land in California are the De La Vegas. Uh, the son of the family, the, the only son of the family, Diego, is sent away to Spain, to Madrid, to train and study and learn everything he needs to know to be a gentleman, to be a caballero, to be somebody worthy of taking over the family business and uh, inheriting the land and uh, and their fortune and being the head of the family one day. However, while Diego's over there, um, on top of learning how to fight and strategize and handle himself uh, physically as a, a warrior, as a caballero, he also develops a thirst for knowledge. This is a very exciting time uh, as far as scientific and technological advances. So he stays a lot longer studying 